party people it's twin, twin soul, soul poets. poets we are your go-to couple for love and relationship advice dope spoken word poetry and uplifting, uplifting content. content like this and Frenchie <laughs> the other Hamilton today's video was inspired by a question that we got in the comments so be mm -hmm. sure to always put your questions there because we will make videos about them sometimes yes. and they were asking if we experienced the runner chaser phase in our twin flame relationship mm -hmm. For anyone who's not heard this term, the runner chaser phase is in a twin flame dynamic um, when one or the other person sort of pulls back, withdraws from the relationship and um, maybe the other person is kind of reaching, reaching after, them, yeah. uh, following after them and trying to continue the relationship. Um, this often occurs and is something that's talked about when uh, in twin flame conversations a lot because of the dynamic of twin flames is such that it creates a very palpable and powerful opportunities for growth. Sometimes those uh, reflections that you're offering to each other might be too intense um, to for one or the other person to handle in that moment. And so that's when that instinct to withdrawal comes in and you kind of like, I can't deal with this right now. Right, and that growth often comes with growing pains, which sometimes yes. that person just isn't ready to deal with. Yes, a lot of these things might have been hiding in the shadow of the subconscious mm -hmm. for a long time, for lifetimes or even past lifetimes, old traumas, old pains Childhood that you've wounds. just not processed or dealt with will come up in a twin flame uh, union. And so, um, and that's one of the most powerful things about the twin flame relationship is this opportunity to heal and grow through those things together. Yes, it's really helpful if you look at the twin flame relationship as a call to inner growth. If you um, are trying to attract a twin flame relationship or you maybe you feel you've just met your twin flame, if you understand it from that perspective, it is going to help you j tremendously yes. on the journey. And when we started talking about it, we feel like that's why we don't um, sense that we had too much of a runner chaser dynamic. We do have a few things that we'll mention that we feel like kind of were the closest thing we had to that. And then our separation was relatively short, although we did have one. Mm -hmm. um, and there are things that we did and ways that we approached our relationship that we feel made that happen. Yeah. Something that we both agreed really helped us avoid a lot of this runner chaser dynamic and drama was the fact that both of us before meeting were really on our own spiritual journeys. Mm -hmm. um, we had both really embraced this journey of like diving deep with in into the self and exploring some of those uh, harder lessons yeah. to grow through and um, exploring like childhood wounds and all that stuff. And we had both actually definitely been through a pretty intense heavy dark night of the soul uh before meeting actually right. when we had were able to talk about it um you know it's it seems like those periods of our dark nights of the soul actually seem to coincide right like before it was meeting totally tang tangential it was almost at the exact same time right. that we were going through that which is very twin flamey yeah things happen for sure very synchronistic and the, mm -hmm. that the timelines of that um sort of life uh experience lined up for us so so perfectly mm -hmm. um but i think that that work that we had been doing and just that interest it, it was really an interest and an intention for both of us to really and a be, deep desire be, be growing spiritually to mm -hmm. be exploring ourselves to be expanding we were both artists you know and um so i think that was a big part of our our calling and i think that served us really well when we did come together because we both you know even on our first date agreed that that was something the number one thing that we even wanted in a relationship right. was I think to, I asked you the, that question what's the most important thing to you in a relationship yeah, we both had the answer that like I think I said I wanted to be with someone who made me a better person yeah you know, I, think I said and, I want to grow right and, so coming in with that kind of desire and that kind of intention and especially into any relationship really but especially into a twin flame dynamic um, is going to make things 
a lot easier. And it's not that we still didn't come up against all those mirroring and all of that like um, invitations for inner reflection. Because we did. Because we did and do. <laughs> and do. <laughs> and do. But coming in with that awareness that we already had the desire to grow and putting that first actually before you know you're trying to help your partner or be a therapist for your partner putting the focus on yourself is going to make you make it so that you can show up better within the twin flame mm -hmm. dynamic and i think it's really gotten us through a lot of like some of the harder challenges in our relationship how do we move right. through it and that leads really great into the second thing i would say helped us avoid a lot of that runner chaser um, dynamic is that we also made a commitment to growth together as a couple. So as individuals, we had already decided that that was one of the priorities in our lives personally. But then we literally sat down together and said, anytime that we go through challenge, we are going to grow looking at each other in the eyes and making that kind of sacred agreement together. Mm -hmm. Don't underestimate the power of sitting down with your twin flame and saying like, we are making the decision to grow no matter what. We know that when things get tough, it just means that it's an opportunity. And yeah. so like, even in the back of my mind, in our most crazy challenging stuff, that was playing on tape for me. It's almost like a spiritual accountability partner. <laughs> Same as if you had a, a, a partner that you go to the gym with every day and like they, they help drag your ass to the gym when you're like, I don't feel like going. You know? Or help you do those extra reps when you don't feel like you yeah, can keep it's going. Yeah, like, I can't go. You, you want to quit, but they're like, no, two more, you two more. You got it in you. Know? I give up, I'm done, you know, and they're like, no. It's a great we're getting metaphor. Through this. And when you think about it, if you look at the idea of a twin flame as the same soul, literally, that then anything you do to benefit yourself also benefits mm. your twin flame. That's there's there's no separation there. So if you stop seeing yourselves as separate, even if you are in the separation phase, then you can understand that any work that you're doing on yourself is going to benefit your twin flame and make it more likely that you can come together in union. I think that shortens any separation phase. And it also changes the whole perspective of like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a negative thing to take space. Yes. It feels like, okay, a healthy thing. It's like, mm -hmm. this is me grounding myself, coming back to myself and figuring out, getting clear on what I need to do to get myself right. And ultimately that's the best thing I could do for my partner. Because totally. when you do come back together, it's like, it, it's flowing again. And I love what Aaron Dowdy said in one of his videos when he said that being the chaser is energetically implying that there's something running from you. And right. that made a lot of sense to me. I'm like, yes, I think that's part of what our dynamic was, especially early on, was that if you're if you think about it as being magnetizing something in not chasing something yeah. you're letting it come to you you're sitting in your power you're you're working on your inner growth and strength that's magnetic so mm -hmm. it's drawing in there's no there's no chasing happening in that dynamic mm -hmm. and another thing when hamilton and i were talking about the early phases of our, of our relationship i remember there was a point where i felt hamilton pull back a little bit really early on in the first couple months we were dating and it was very subtle it was after we had had a really good time with some friends of his I'd met his friends for the first time and it just there was a little shift in our relationship where it felt like oh wow we're feeling closer and I brought it up to him and I just said you know I noticed that I felt like you pulled away a little bit and I just wanted to let you know that I don't have any expectations of what this has to be I'm just really enjoying the moment and I want you to know that I want to continue enjoying this unfolding and I'm not trying to, you know, make this be anything that it's not. And I think going in, especially early on as a twin flame, especially with that kind of energy, just, I want to enjoy this as it unfolds. I want to play in this beautiful, amazing, like astounding connection that I've been um, blessed enough to come upon in my life. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of energy that wants that keeps people around. It's when that shift happens when you start worrying about the like, what is this? What are we? Do I have to be with my twin flame because I met yeah. my twin flame? And what and that me, energy was... like repels, right? And the energy of of exploration and Abraham Hicks talks really well about this yeah. too. 
when you stay in that energy of, of love, of being in love, you know how it feels when you first meet someone and you're just exploring and everything's new and exciting. That doesn't have to end. It can shift and it, it changes as you go through your relationship together. But if you always have a sense of exploration and a sense of play and a sense of wanting to grow, then that runner chaser dynamic doesn't really come into the picture so much. It, it do, does feel very intense at times. And I think that that moment that you're referring to, I was just, I was about to go to Thailand. We've sort of told this story before mm-hmm. she was moving to Georgia. And, you know, so I knew our time was getting short. And as the intensity was building, I'm, I'm feeling all these feelings of like, oh, man, am I falling in love here? Like, this is crazy. It's going to hurt when we have to say goodbye. He was. Like, spoiler. <laughs> I was, but, um, but yeah, so part of me, you know, the fear part of me of like the fear of loss, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I, it was like, I was trying to spare myself that pain of loss when I had to go to Thailand and say goodbye. I, it was like this part of me trying to protect my heart of being like, oh, well, this will hurt a lot less if you don't let it go any further and Mm -hmm. it's getting a little bit too deep, buddy. Mm -hmm. But ultimately that's like a fear-based thing, right? And uh, it's a more fulfilling experience to open your heart than it is to shut it off and wall it off for as some means of protection. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you expand yourself and you expand your life experience and your joy and your capacity to, to give and receive love so much more by choosing to open. If you are a runner, ask yourself why you're running and what you're running from. What has made me uncomfortable here? What is it that has that is feeling uncomfortable for me? And if it's something that points this way, then that's an opportunity to say, well, maybe this relationship can actually open me to parts of myself that I wouldn't have known. Mm-hmm. And there's a courage there. And that kind of courage, it takes courage to, to commit to, in any relationship, but especially a twin flame one, but the rewards are great. We had two separation phases in our relationship. And the first one was completely by circumstance. When we met, um, Hamilton already had plans to move to Thailand and I had plans to move to Georgia. So we knew we had about two months of this kind of, we call it like shooting star experience. And we just let it burn bright. And when the period was up, we released each other with love. And I think that was a huge key to us coming back together because we really let go and and kind of wished each other well on the journey and if we were to come back together i feel like we both had an openness there but there was no expectation of that whether or not that was going to happen yeah because at that time i really didn't know how long i was going to be overseas and i certainly had no notions of going moving to um down to georgia at that time so yeah it was kind of like we may never see each other again. Right. But as a lot of twin flames probably know, a lot of it seems to happen of its own accord. It's almost like the twin flame journey is doing you <laughs> and you're not doing the twin flame journey because we it ended up reconnecting. I and mean, we had so many synchronicities and crazy stuff that like sounds unbelievable or corny that actually happened to us. Um, and we ended up reconnecting and then that, that whole energy just was like yeah. rekindled. But so that was our first separation that was just by circumstance. And I think it served us so well. So that's another thing I'd love to reiterate is to change your thoughts about separation being a negative thing. It can be very Mm -hmm. positive. It can be a time of growth or introspection, or maybe you need to meet some other people first. Maybe you need to date other people to realize Mm -hmm. that this person really is the one that you would like to have a long-term vision with. All of those things are important to fine tune your understanding of why this person is the one you would like to be with. And a lot of people have talked about the fact that a twin flame doesn't have to be a life partner. Sometimes a twin flame can just Mm -hmm. come in and ignite that growth or ignite your um, mission for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And they may not be a long-term partner. For us, it happened to be that way. And for a lot of twin flames, it is. But Um, I think we both would have been okay if it hadn't been. Yeah, I I absolutely I I really felt that in my heart and I felt that that you felt that way too. Mm -hmm. And... You know, it's like that old saying, people are in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And, you know, 
it doesn't mean that the first two options or something went wrong right if that's how it turns out and that's really important to acknowledge because i think there's a lot of weight around twin flames and if i meet my twin flame i have to make it work and it shouldn't feel like i'm making this no. work or i'm efforting this no. to work it it should flow it doesn't mean there is not challenge it doesn't mean that there's not you know it tough does times take work. or work but it shouldn't feel like you're fitting a you know square peg in a round hole with complete sincerity there's been plenty of times especially early on um where i had the instinct to run mm -hmm. or like get away and and really like want there was a big part of me that wanted to pull back mm -hmm. out of fear whatever but like you said it's like the twin flame journey sometimes feels like it's happening to you or moving you through things in a in a pre-planned course like every time i felt that way there was some kind of like undeniable slap in the face from life or whatever you know um or a sign or a message yes yeah, some kind get. of sign that was just like undeniable of like okay there's a reason for this and i should you know right in sit our... down and reflect rather than you know trying to escape in our separation time. phase like i saw your name everywhere i would see hamilton things like that. all over the place like just it was just like okay i mean i'm, <laughs> I'm seeing his name everywhere and it's like such a direct sign mm -hmm. you could it couldn't be more direct like when you feel like just god or the universe is speaking directly to you it's like things would happen that were just an absolute answer to any questions that i had of like okay like there's something really important going on here and mm -hmm. it's worth more than whatever ego thing i got going on mm -hmm. whatever i'm upset about when we were talking about making this video and we were like well we don't really have a runner chaser dynamic so much i did come up with the thought that we did a video called what to do if your twin flame is already in a relationship and that was something we had experienced when we met hamilton had already been in a relationship with someone else and definitely check out that video um, if you want to hear about that story i won't go into it now but that was kind of one of the ways he ran was having these two different people in his life that he hadn't really fully committed to either way being in that you know yeah. maybe you're experiencing that if you're in that place it kind of keeps you safe because you don't have to make a choice but you're kind of it's kind of like a have your cake and eat it too situation so that is a form of running and when you come from a clarity if you're the other person in that situation you come from the clarity of the kind of commitment that you want and deserve in your life then that makes it clear to the other person what you're willing to accept and what you're not willing to accept and on that note of being really clear with your boundaries and things i would also invite people as the same way to not look at the separation phase as necessarily a negative thing but even to maybe even rethink the terminology of runner chaser. Mm. There's a big difference between like somebody running away and and somebody taking a healthy decision to like take some space mm -hmm. for reflection, for clarity and and to create healthy boundaries, mm -hmm. you know. That's that's a good thing and to to sort of not always think of that as a uh, one i'm running or the other person's running it's like sometimes you need space and sometimes mm -hmm. some problems or situations can't be solved immediately yeah and, we should and change the name time. the twin flame inner clarity phase or something <laughs> drop your ideas below but there's I, I i agree that's a great point there's a better way to describe this it, and the runner chaser the and, energy of that feels like you're never gonna win right. you know and if someone is taking their space it doesn't mean that the other person has to chase them and and there's even a difference between like communicating and saying vulnerably i would like to continue this relationship <laughs> i understand that you're taking space but i i would like to continue when you're ready or if you're ready like that's not chasing that's healthy communication too right. also you don't have to do more than that you don't have to keep persisting and pressuring the person and asking for them to come back before they're ready right. check out our video how to get someone to commit to you it is good it's got good tips in there part of self-love is is valuing yourself enough to know that whether they are your twin flame or not there's no one in the world that you need to convince to love you that you need yeah. to chase down and t 
and lasso and rope them back in and because they're meant to be with you. No, it's very important to value yourself enough to to know that you deserve to be with someone who want really wants yes. to be with you and is choosing to be with you, not right. that you've caught them right. <laughs> finally. And you've got to choose yourself and choose your own integrity um, first. That's a powerful self. That's how self. you want to come into a twin flame relationship yeah. is having putting yourself first, putting your well-being first because <gasps> you, can't, you don't want to show up as... as you don't want to show up as, as someone who's needing someone else to complete them. And if that's the powerful lesson of self-love that you learn from a separation period, as, as someone who's a chaser, maybe you're not the one running, but maybe that situation, if you feel like it's just perpetuating, perpetuating, going on, and you're wondering why your twin flame keeps running, maybe this is the lesson that your twin flame is now trying to teach you. To love yourself enough to value yourself and let them go. The second separation phase that we had was really, neither one of us was really running or chasing. It was a mutually agreed upon time that we were going to take some space. Um, I went back to our hometown and, um, you know, she stayed where she was at. And we just agreed that we weren't going to talk or communicate at all, text, nothing for a couple months we stuck to that and i again i think that was actually a healthy thing for us i know that for me um it really allowed me to get clear that uh that this was a relationship that i really valued and that i wanted i wanted to continue with and that i wanted to continue to pursue her and really like commit myself to it mm -hmm. um and that was that decision came from me in my heart and my like time that I took to reflect and really think about it. And you also had that moment where you had some um, advice given to you that kind of directed you to coming to that conclusion, right? Yeah, big time. Um, a mutual friend of ours who we actually kind of met through uh, shared with me this uh, bit of Toltec wisdom that talked about like the, the divine masculine essence what they really want, number one, is freedom. And, and the divine feminine is always most craving uh, security. In general, that we typically tend to see uh, the, the male presence running more often. That, that's sort of like the archetype of, you know, the relationship love dynamic. And in the Toltec path, their teachers uh, explain that the, the divine masculine actually really finds and accesses its true freedom the freedom that he really desires from surrendering to the love of his divine uh, feminine to his lover and those are the kinds of insights and answers that can come to you when you allow this time of separation to happen without mm -hmm. resistance when you go into it with the affirmation that this time is benefiting me I don't know how this is going to come out, but I believe that it is going to come out with the highest outcome for all parties involved. Yeah. When you go in with that kind of intention, it's going to end up in a way that serves you. And for me during that time, and I've talked about this before, I kept my focus on my vision of love rather than him. And I will say it again and again. I, if you get one thing that I say on, on our videos, please take that because when you can make your vision the focus over a specific person, you are making a calling, you are making space for whoever is in alignment with that vision to come into your life. And also during that time, I got into my heart space about him because there was a lot of stuff in my head and anxieties and worries and you know all the things that happen in our, in our thinking brain. And when I went to my heart space, I felt a peace about it. And again, I don't know that I would have gotten that clarity had I not had the separation from him. So I could have the quiet, so I could have the peace, so I could be away from his energy a little bit. Because obviously there's attraction, there's, you know, there's chemicals and emotions and sex and all these things that can kind of cloud the ability to truly see clearly. So go into these times with the expectation that it's going to serve you and it will. Let go of the idea of running or chasing and just look at it as an exploration. Look at it as growing together yeah. and, and as individuals. 
it doesn't necessarily mean that one or the other person or both people screwed up somehow Mm -hmm. if it just sort of comes to a point where it's not going to go any further Mm -hmm. that can be okay and there can be really powerful lessons in that too and sometimes you might your separation could be for years and you might come back together you never know how this twin flame journey can unfold it might not be the right timing right now so i will also say that just because it didn't work right now doesn't mean that it won't eventually or that it couldn't so there's a lot of remaining open remaining open there's a lot of ways to look at this from Um, But we hope, if anything, that you take from this that your own integrity, your own inner growth is the thing to prioritize and everything else will will fall fall into place. If you felt like this video was helpful to clarify the whole runner-chaser dynamic for Twin Flame Unions, make sure you leave a comment below and ask us another question. We Mm -hmm. love getting prompts for ideas on what to talk about. Yeah, it's really helpful to us to come up with new fresh ideas for our channel. And then that way we know what people want to hear and what what you guys are interested in from us. Yes, and um, make sure to check out that video that we mentioned. I'm going to place it right here. And And if you want a Frenchie, um, let us know in the comments. (laughs) We'll ship him to you and we will pay the shipping ourselves. Thanks for watching, and we will see you guys in the next video.